Hi everyone and welcome to our webinar. Today's topic is best of both worlds, combining Enscape and V-Ray for unmatched results and I'm very much looking forward to it. I hope you are too. We have a really special webinar lined up for you today. But before we jump in, a couple of things to note. So firstly, we are recording the session and we will share a copy of this with you shortly after the webinar, which will be particularly helpful if you want to re-watch any of the tutorial aspects of today's session. And secondly, if you have any questions, please submit them via the questions box and we'll get back to you via email shortly after the webinar as well. So let me introduce you to our speakers today. I am joined by my colleague, Dan Monaghan, who is the sales director for North America for Chaos. And we also have another Dan with us, Dan Stone, who is head of operations and a certified V-Ray trainer at the Arca Line Academy. So thank you both for joining. Um, Dan Monaghan is going to kick off with a short introduction to Enscape, V-Ray and The Bridge, which is helping to connect design and visualization workflows in new and exciting ways. Um, and then we will have Dan Stone walk us through how you take a scene from Enscape into V-Ray for the finishing touches. So Dan Monaghan, I will hand over to you now and we can get started. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gemma, and welcome everyone. Dan and I are super excited to be here today and share how chaos is connecting the Viz workflow from real time to photorealistic. Now, before we start, I wanna give a very quick introduction to chaos for those of you who don't know who we are. Chaos started over 25 years ago as a rendering plugin for Studio Max. Since that time, we've quickly gained in popularity and now support over nine of the most popular modeling programs and have gone on to become the world's leading computer visualization company. Our software is used by top companies across a variety of different industries, including architecture, engineering, and construction, media and entertainment, automotive, product design, as well as e-commerce. Early last year, Chaos announced an exciting merger with Enscape, the world's best real-time rendering technology. Then later in 2022, we acquired Celindo. Now for some of you, Celindo may be a, a new brand. Um, Celindo is a leader in 3D product visualization and AR augmented reality technology for the furniture and home decor industry. And they bring a large library of 3D furniture assets, but more importantly, they bring the relationship with these popular furniture manufacturers. We see Celindo as really a key part of a larger master asset strategy that's going to help the entire group. Now combined, the new Chaos company is arguably the largest pure visualization company in the world. Now that's important and it's not important because we're the biggest, but because you now have one company who's solely focused on helping you solve your Viz workflow problems. And as a pure Viz company, we're not tied to any particular modeling program or even any specific rendering tech. So we're in a really unique position, not only to connect your Viz workflow, but also to unite the industry. And this is where V-Ray and Enscape fit in. Now, for the first time, architects, designers, and 3D artists can take advantage of real-time rendering and photorealistic rendering in the same workflow. Prior to this, there was a real gap between real-time and photorealistic. There was simply no way to leverage the work from the design team to the Viz team. And if you needed a higher quality than your real-time rendering program could provide, you, you were stuck, your data was locked. There was simply no way to move your data or model from real-time to photorealistic rendering. We've bridged this gap. Now, the work done in real-time can be easily moved to the Viz team for photorealistic rendering and broadcast quality animations. So what does this look like? What advantage does this workflow offer? Now, for iterative design, architects, designers, 3D Viz specialists, and 3D artists, they can take advantage of the real-time rendering in Enscape. Enscape allows you to instantly see the results of your work as you make changes in your scene or your model. In fact, one way to think of Enscape is as a live viewport into your modeling application. Anything you model in your design program is automatically reflected in Enscape, and it's reflected in real time. 
This allows you to immediately see the impact your design decisions have on a space and its architecture and construction. So you can quickly validate your design ideas and get to decision points faster. And because Enscape is fast, you'll find that Enscape is used for all phases of the design project, from pursuits to pre-design, SDDD, construction, and even post-construction. Enscape also helps you communicate with owners and other stakeholders in a more dynamic and interactive way. In addition to still renderings, you can walk clients live through your models and make design changes on the fly. Anything you change in Enscape will be instantly reflected back into your modeling program and any changes to the model will be immediately visible in Enscape, giving you new ways to communicate your design ideas. And this interactive design can be done on screen or in virtual reality. Enscape offers one click into VR, allowing your clients to experience your spaces at a one-to-one -one scale. Adding Enscape gives 3D artists and viz professionals a faster way to re render images and new ways to present their designs. Now, while Enscape is optimized for speed, ease of use, and mo motion, V-Ray is optimized for image quality. In fact, the quality and innovation in V-Ray have been recognized by both the Academy of Motion Pictures and the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. It's this quality that has made V-Ray the industry standard for both architects, brands, and visual effects studios. Adding V-Ray to your real-time workflow can overcome the limits of real-time rendering technology, allowing you to take your real-time presentations to the next level. Unlike real-time rendering, V-Ray is what we call a physically-based renderer, meaning it aims to simulate the behavior of light in a physically accurate manner. Now, while other rendering programs simplify, or what we call fake the lighting, V-Ray takes into consideration the physics of how that light bounces around a scene and how that light interacts with objects and materials in the environment before eventually decaying. In addition, it lets designers really dial in and tune each scene so they can quickly achieve the exact look they're going for. This accurate representation of light and the fine level of control is really what separates V-Ray and allows you to create such high quality visuals images that are virtually indistinguishable from those captured by a camera. In fact, many firms are using V-Ray to replace photography and video, saving time and money. Later in design, V-Ray can help convey the exact design details. You can accurately simulate materials and lighting, quickly exploring options, and making informed decisions based on accurate visual feedback. V-Ray makes sure everyone on the design team has a very clear understanding of our design intent, which can reduce errors and omissions. V-Ray also opens up a world of assets and materials. In Enscape, assets and materials, they're optimized for real time, meaning that they're purpose built to be low poly and render quickly. V-Ray doesn't have this limitation. With V-Ray, you have access to over 5,000 high poly assets and incredibly accurate materials. Plus, you have access to unlimited amounts of 3D content coming from popular websites like CG Trader, Turbo Squared, and Render People, without having to worry about if these assets are real-time ready. And like in Enscape, if you can't find what you're looking for, or if you need a bespoke piece of content, you can even create your own custom assets. So your asset options are truly limitless. And lastly, adding V-Ray to your Enscape real-time workflow gives you more flexibility and hardware options. You're not solely dependent on the GPU. Real-time rendering requires storing and processing large amounts of data. The available memory in a GPU can limit the complexity and scale of the scenes that can be rendered in real-time. Memory constraints can impact the number of, uh, uh, and size of assets that you use and the quality of textures and the lighting effects. With V-Ray, you don't have these hardware limitations. 
You can take advantage of GPU, CPU distributed, or even cloud rendering to render seeds of almost unlimited complexity. So by connecting real time and physically based rendering, we're able to provide the best of both worlds in one workflow, giving you the ultimate flexibility and allowing you to apply the right rendering technology for whatever phase of the design process you're working in. Now, with that, I'd like to hand the presentation over to Dan Stone and ask Dan to demonstrate the benefits of having real-time and photorealistic rendering in the same workflow, and how to take an Enscape scene into V-Ray for further refinement. Dan, Gemma, thank you so much for having me. This is the first webinar in the Orange Venscape uh, for me. Uh, normally, I'm on the V-Ray side of things, so uh, please go easy on me. A um, bit of background on me, I am the co-founder and director of operations at the Arculum Academy and I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about this Chaos Bridge. Um, so whether you're an Enscape user or a V-Ray user, hopefully you'll get some tips to get you started and I really appreciate you all tuning in. So I've been a V-Ray and SketchUp user for about a decade now, maybe a little bit more, uh, professionally at our sister company Arculine Visualizations. So we're a leading Viz Studio over here in the UK, and I've overseen or managed over two and a half thousand final images uh, produced in V-Ray. I painstakingly added these up a few months ago. Um, here is some of our work from over the years. And what we did five years ago is we launched the Arculime Academy to begin teaching our clients how to create complex 3D scenes and photorealistic CGI's, much like you can see here. This, is, this was done by offering live courses, webinars, guides, you know, we're all certified trainers and we're Chaos Partners as well. So we can offer some guidance and instruction for all level of SketchUp and V-Ray users. And I would also like to give a big shout out to all of the Arculine Academy graduates that are listening. Um, we teach professionals how to create these production level images to market their designs. So normally this is architects, interior designers, landscape architects, set designers, but this generally is considered the last step. You know, the production stage, it's, it's the final step. So more recently, we've definitely seen a shift towards designing in real-time environments, much like Enscape, which is changing the status quo. Uh, Dan used a really interesting expression uh, when we spoke a few weeks ago. He called it architecture in motion. Uh, definitely had a nice ring to it. So in terms of you guys, I'm assuming you're mostly Enscape users with a bit of V-Ray thrown in for good measure. So I want to introduce one to the other on our really cool new flagship project called Cornwall House. Um, this is one we've been working on with the team at Enscape and we're just trying to show really what, what this Chaos Bridge can do. So there's a lot to cover. I'm going to crack on, but in terms of housekeeping, please drop any questions that you have in the chat. And at the end, if we've got time, we'll get around to answering them. If not, we'll reach out to you over email. So uh, no worries, drop it in the chat and uh, we'll get back to you. So for the benefit of the V-Ray delegation, let's run through how we open a file in Enscape and just begin to navigate our scene. Now this is the Cornwall House project that uh, we've been talking about and um, you can see there's no vegetation here. So we can start the Enscape window by hitting this uh, start Enscape button. And it's, it's going to generally, it's going to open up this Enscape uh, viewport renderer, which will be running parallel to your SketchUp model. Now, normally we would be designing, you know, from the ground up in Enscape, but for this project, the design was already quite well resolved. You know, we already had the form and material choices well defined. Um, what we can see here is we're just moving around within the Enscape window. So we're not even in SketchUp at the minute. We're just zooming, panning, um, scrolling around uh, within the Enscape window. And in terms of the form, this project was designed with V-Ray in mind originally. So it's nice to see how Enscape copes uh, with a V-Ray scene. Now, what I quite like to do is uh, I'm more familiar with moving around in SketchUp. So hitting this third button along in the Enscape toolbar, you can synchronize the views. So if you feel a little bit more comfortable navigating in SketchUp, this is, this is definitely more of what I like to do. What you can see is that any adjustments you make within SketchUp, they're instantly updated within Enscape. 
So I'm sort of scaling things around, I'm moving these shading elements. It's quite nice to see how this updates within a, uh, like a real-time rendered environment within Enscape. Um, you can see here, I'm you know adding assets, adding this chair into the scene, and almost instantly, we're getting a rendered, real-time rendered uh, iteration on the right-hand side. Um, it's com keeping up with all of the adjustments I'm making, you know, adding new assets in here, which which could be quite um, expensive in terms of computing power, but it keeps up with it absolutely fine. And this is quite a common example of what we would be doing nowadays when we're working with our visualization clients to do any kind of design development process. Oops, I did a... <laughs> a veranda in there by accident um, but yeah we're basically we're we're manipulating our model and adjusting it and seeing the updates in real time now this just massively increases uh, client buy-in because they're seeing uh, a much more realistic version of their project and the design changes that are being implemented now what i quite like to do with you all is um, develop this interior scene so this is a bedroom and what we've done previously is I've gone ahead and added lots of Enscape assets, much in the same way you just saw me uh, do before with the chairs and the, the table. So this is the scene that we're actually going to be developing moving forwards. So now that we're inside, what we'll do here is we'll resolve the view um, and we'll start playing around with the sun position and do a bit of a solar study. But before we do that, we're just messing around with the sliding door, seeing what it looks like open or closed. Um, let's remove the shading element here as well and see what happens as the sun strikes the floor. You can just about make out the uh, complex shader. It's creating that dappled shadow effect down there on the left-hand side of the Enscape window. So we'll resolve the view. I was pretty much happy with the way that it is, bedroom A, no veg. And what we'll do is just adjust the sun position using the SketchUp shadows panel of the tray. Now this is very similar to V-Ray in that you know adjusting this slider allows you to complete a solar study. But what I think Enscape has over V-Ray in this instance is the speed of iteration. You can go ahead and make these adjustments and see the changes being applied in real time. Whereas with V-Ray, it, it always takes a little bit, you know, it's always a little bit of time for it to start rendering at least. You get that grainy effect uh, where there's lots of noise to begin with. But here, you know, it's really seamless, really smooth. And it's very easy to imagine a client review meeting where you're using this feature to help, you know, develop your design with your client. Now that we've got our sun position set, let's start preparing this image for render. Like in the V-Ray asset editor, we're going to use the material editor to start refining these materials, specifically the floor, so the 750 underscore timber. And what I love about the material editor within Enscape is that you can use an albedo, which is like a grayscale version of your diffuse, to give you those imperfections across the surface. In this case, we can see the reflections on the floor. Uh, they're imperfect, you know, they're, they're not uniform, which is, which is great for realism. You can also adjust the transparency, you know, very similar to um, V-Ray, but in this case, it's being updated in a, you know, completely real-time environment. You could swap out the masks like we're doing here. This one's very funky. I'm uh, not sure it's all that realistic, but uh, you've got lots of control. You know, you can adjust the brightness, invert it, and see those changes update within real time. I'm going to revert this back to what it was. Let's take a look at some of the visual settings that we have within the Enscape renderer. First of all, we've got the, so the style, um, we have the normal, the normal mode, which is what it was on, then more of like a clay renderer, which is white, and polystyrol, like a polystyrene style of renderer, uh, with the option to add outlines as well, if you wanted something a little bit more diagrammatic. The auto exposure feature um, is great, that's normally what I leave this on, but you can manually adjust the exposure as well. 
um, depth of field can be adjusted here and you also have the option to manually adjust the focal point of your image um, that's what this kind of whited out line is it's the point of the distance from the camera like the z value that's where it's going to be focused and then you've got some more of the um, kind of like the image corrections here where you can adjust all sorts of highlights shadows temp uh, saturation um, moving further down you've got effects like motion blur which isn't a thing within v-ray because you don't normally have moving elements um, but with lens flare and bloom that all look quite familiar to the v-ray artists um, vignette is also something that I, personally i don't really use that much within um, v-ray but it allows you to create this really cool effect and chromatic aberration again it's there to simulate real world cameras so um you got fog as well by default it's already it's not set to zero so there's always an element of you being able to control the fog here where you can adjust the height the intensity and create some really cool god rays as you can see there so i'm going to reset the fog settings to default and play around with some of these illumination settings sun brightness it's fairly self-explanatory but the shadow sharpness i love this feature being able to control the the way that the shadows go from light to dark incredibly cool ambient brightness as well for those lower lit scenes this is a really nice way to bring that up obviously in v-ray you don't tend to have many moving elements so the option to add wind works incredibly well when you've got vegetation in your model something else which is really interesting about this is you can adjust what the horizon looks like without affecting the sky so the, there are some defaults in here, some presets. Currently, this is on desert, but you've got forest, um, mountains. So depending on the environment you're trying to uh, design in, you've got the ability to amend these presets to suit. You can adjust the rotation as well to further configure this. And if you've got a nighttime uh, scene, then you can adjust the size of the moon as well, which is, which is very cool. Now from uh, V-Ray 6, the procedural clouds feature, this actually came from Enscape in the first place. And you can see these clouds are volumetric, so they're casting light onto our model. You can adjust the density, variety, you can add contrails as well, which is really interesting. Um, and this is designed to allow you to uh, create any kind of skyscape you like, really. Um, You've also got the option to adjust the longitude and latitude, kind of like the positioning of the clouds in the sky as well. But we're going to head back into our scene and begin preparing for final output. So now that we've got our scene set up, I'm going to begin turning back on our tags. I've got some tags, uh, I've got some vegetation on the tag. There we go. I'll get my words out. So in the background there, you can see we've got some planting, uh, some grasses some trees as well. And this is what I'd like to show within the render. So here, the next step for us is just to head over and take a screenshot because we've already set up all of those other settings. And this is really quick. This has now saved out the image in accordance with the output settings we saw before. So as easy as that, it's rendered off this image. And that's really impressive when you think about it because it's took barely any time to render. It's effectively taking a snapshot from what's already a really nice high quality environment. You know, I know a lot of architects that would be using this to be able to um, iterate in real time and just take snapshots to send to clients. But something else you can do is it's very, very easy to set up animations. What I'm doing here is using the video editor and setting a couple of waypoints to transition between you can then set the time it takes to transition and you've there you've got you've basically got an animation there you put a few of these together and then suddenly it's it's not too hard to imagine your animation you know your your final output is almost being developed organically as you design the project from the start so the plan now then is to take our endscape scene here and in 30 minutes we're going to try and turn it into this v-ray image now as you'd expect this is a really long <laughs> process but we'll do what we can within half an hour um, so i am going to have to fly through this quite quickly uh, we do have a complete guide to v-ray for sketchup that goes into much more detail so i'll add a qr 
code overlay in the corner for a bit more information on that. And as guests of this webinar, we'll give you 20% off the course as well. So let's jump back into our SketchUp scene. Uh, we've closed Enscape, and the goal of the next step is to replace some of these Enscape assets with some higher quality V-Ray ready assets from the Chaos Cosmos. So these are higher quality because they don't need to be optimized for interactive environments like Enscape. But you can see there's loads and loads of assets within the Chaos Cosmos. Not just models, but you've got textures and lights and stuff as well. You can save out some favorites, which is what I've done here. And I'm going to import this bed that I like the look of. Now, the technique I like to use is I'll just place this down anywhere kind of in the scene to begin with. And then I will use the component replacement technique within SketchUp where I can basically find this new bed that I brought in, bed 4904, and just replace with selected. It just saves me fiddling around with it and having to you know, manually replace it when I've already done it once. So here we can see we've got the uh, plant that we brought in in Enscape. And I'm a huge fan of all of the vegetation assets that come with Chaos Cosmos. Um, Initially, I'm going to bring in a pot, just because I'm being lazy. I could have modelled the pot, but it's uh, it's a little bit easier to use one of the Cosmos assets. Um, placing down the palm itself and then just repositioning it to a point upon which I'm happy. What I'd then do is go ahead and group this up and delete the existing plant. Here we've got uh, the Enscape pendant lights worked quite well, but... I'd really like to focus on bringing in a higher quality, maybe a little bit more modern version from the Cosmos library, just because there's a little bit more out there. So um, shuffling this around, I'm just aligning this with the center of this pendant. There are loads of different ways of doing this, but in this instance, I think it's just a case of doing this by eye to begin with. Then moving this over, I want to get the same copy on the other side and then get rid of the Enscape pendants. Now this is a little bit too low to be practical, so just scaling this up, I think it looks absolutely fine. So something else I'd also quite like to take a look at here is adding a rug. Um, I'd want there to be a high degree of control with this rug. So what I'm going to do is draw the shape that I would like the rug to be, and then use something called V-Ray Fur to control exactly how say like dense or long each of the strands are so in this case i'm just going to cut this and then paste it into a new file so we'll tweak the uh, segment count just so that it's a bit smoother and then group it that's very important so here we can see that with an interactive render running we can go ahead and then add fur to the selection and see we've got strands that are now growing out of the surface so in the asset editor, which we've just opened up, there are several different tabs which we'll look at in more detail on the course. But what we're focusing on is the fur section, where adjusting the count is kind of like the uh, density of it. And then length, obviously, a value of 10 probably isn't what we want for this fur here. But bringing it down to a value of sort of 1 or 2 is, is fairly normal for a, a rug or some carpet. You might want to go ahead and tweak some of these other parameters as well to further configure how you want this to look. But generally, we would be adding fur to any kind of rug that we add to any of our interior scenes, as well as for things like uh, grass as well. I don't think there's ever been an image that we've produced that hasn't had fur in it. Oh, I need to think about that. I really don't think there is. So it's, we use this with pretty much every project. And it's a nice way of being able to add lots and lots of detail that just tricks the eye into thinking it's, you know, realistic. You do need much higher counts for, um, for rugs or carpets than you actually do with grass. But we do talk about that on the Complete Guide to V-Ray for SketchUp. So if you were interested in this, then um, you could take a look on there. So what we're seeing is that the interactive render, it's, it's updating nowhere near as quickly as Enscape, but we don't really need it to be as, you know, super responsive right now because we're just trying to configure this for the final production render, which we'll be doing at the end of this process. Now, obviously this is a white rug. This is, 
asking for trouble <laughs> it's uh, asking for you know some uh, something to be spilled on it so let's find a material from the cosmos library to be safe let's go with the dark gray and what we could do is if we select the material download it then we can import that into our scene moving around it you know it feels very dark here so if we wanted to adjust the material what we can do is click into our bitmap and see we've got this material editing um, feature called a color correction and what I've done is just um, tweaked the saturation as well as the brightness you can go ahead and tweak any of these values to create the desired outcome for any of your materials so let's cut this and we'll paste it back in place into our Cornwall house interior now all of our assets are in place let's take a look at the lighting and my favorite way to start this is using the light gen which is this button here and this was designed to automate a lot of this first stage as it were of the lighting process where it's going to generate lots of different options for you of um, different configurations of the sun and sky or of different types of HDRs as well so um, what we're looking at is some unique styles these are 35 different dome lights and then you'll have nine different variations of each what I've done is I've saved out a preset uh, kind of like a light set we call them and you'll notice that this is the scene um, that we're looking at but it's in a, a clay or like a white version and if you look closely there's loads of different lighting setups um, you've basically this is like a menu you'd then pick from you can then choose whichever of these thumbnails you would like to develop and then that would become then your main source of illumination but what we're going to do here is actually use the same settings we pre-programmed within Enscape because I was happy with the sun position before and the whole goal of what we're trying to do here is create a almost like a newer hopefully a better version within V-Ray of our initial Enscape image so V-Ray itself is a ray tracing engine its entire purpose is to trace rays of light around the scene so lights as small as maybe like an omni light all the way up to our you know sun and sky huge global illumination lights they're all having an effect on the ray tracing within our scene where you've got rays of light which are leaving light sources and then bouncing around multiple times hitting surfaces and then eventually ending up in the camera what we need to do is pre-program some of these lights because more light tends to equal more realism and what we're doing here is we're just going to add some omni lights just underneath these pendant lamps here just to allow us a little bit more information and a bit more flexibility when we go to balance our light sources so you'd also notice i've added some of these um, emissive uh, light strips i guess you can call them around here uh, recessed lighting uh, up at the top and so what I've done is selected all of those materials and then converted them to a mesh light which is a type of V-Ray light source which can have you know really complex forms something else I'm doing here is just adding a few other rectangle lights initially one in the open doorway to force a bit more light into the room if we need it and then making another copy in the dressing room uh, where I'm hoping it could do the same thing and so after making that unique you can see this is what the lighting tab looks like once you've renamed all of these assets what we'll do now is set up an interactive render so the best practice save it first and then we'll adjust the render output if we need to so I've gone low res for this um, I'm going to turn on my Nvidia denoiser because I've got an RTX Nvidia GPU and you'll notice I have material override turned on as well so this is always good practice when you're trying to resolve your lighting now what we're looking at here is basically the exact same thing we got from Enscape in the first place the sun and sky hasn't been changed it's still conforming to the same sun that we set up in Enscape but what we now need to do is control just how bright all of this light is as it enters our camera and so there's a few different ways of doing this but the easiest is probably just to adjust this exposure value and what you'll notice is we've got these weird false colors on the screen 
Um, this is called color clamping and it's a way for you to gauge almost like a benchmark how bright pixels are within your scene. So this is a practice we always do for our primary light source first. So this is like our key light source if we use the three point lighting technique here. And next up, we're trying to focus on the fill lights. So these are designed as secondary lights to fill dark areas of the room. And I love just putting a really nice bold color on these so that we can see where these lights mix, where those, those colors mix together. So we're just resolving the recessed lighting. And what we're looking at here is it's fine to have a bit of burnout, so some false colors, when we're looking directly at the light source. The burnout on the bed is also fine. We could probably correct that in our color corrections later on. The sky outside, I think, is perfectly natural for that to burn out. Because if you were to take a photo inside a room on a bright day, if your room's a whole lot darker, which I expect it would be, then it's natural for your color clamping, so your burnout to appear when looking out the window. So what we're doing now is moving on to our next most powerful light source, which would be these pendant lights. Um, let's make them a green color so that it really stands out from the pink uh, strip lighting mesh light that we've added. And initially it's not working. So this is something you might find is that you've added lights in and they're just not, um, they're not showing up in your render. Now the reason for that is that you might have geometry blocking it. So in this case, I'm just increasing the shadow radius yeah, there we go. So as soon as we've adjusted the shadow radius, um, it allows this light to start uh, bouncing around our scene rather than it being contained by a, a piece of geometry. So currently I'm not all that happy with the way that the light sort of bounces upwards. I think there'd be a harder limit. So I want to move physically move the Omnilight back up to create that hard edge along the bottom edge of that pendant light, if that makes sense. So what we can do is, um, after moving that geometry around, tweak the shadow radius to create that harder line. Again, you can control it a little bit further by tweaking the shadow radius, um, adding some decimal values in there. But for the most part, I'm happy with how that looks. The next up, we're looking at these rectangle lights. Now, these are slightly more complex a concept in a way because these are not practical lights in that we're trying to simulate light here we wouldn't have one of these huge rectangle lights in real life here we're trying to simulate that there would be light there so it's always good practice to add these last because we should try and light up our scenes wherever we can using the practical lights that would exist there within the model itself or within the the scene itself should i say so in this case, we are applying the exact same approach by adding a bold color and then resolving the intensity. You've got other options with rectangle lights as well where you can adjust the directionality. These are all values you can tweak to get you to a point where you feel like you've got a balanced sense of illumination. Now again, it's very hard to cover this rapid fire like we're doing here. So we're just running over the absolute uh, basics, but generally, I'm quite happy with how this is set up at low resolution. So what we can do is we'll reset all of the colors of these lights. And this is going to be something that we'll look at later, but we'll add a light mix. So this is one of my favorite features, if not my favorite feature of V-Ray. So we're going to talk more about that later. So now that we've got our lighting set up, we'll Take a look at the materials because when they come in from Enscape, they can sometimes look a little bit flat. So the main thing we're gonna focus on to begin with is the floor and specifically the glossiness of the floor. I think that's the best bang for your buck change that you can make to any of your materials. So you can see this is the gloss map that we've got loaded into our uh, material. Um, I like to have the preview mode set to floor because you've got that nice reflection of the, the window there. So you've also got the ability to change any of your materials in this way. And I would highly recommend any material adjustments that you make, you get used to using different preview modes. You know, maybe use, make a rule, maybe use at least two. Um, that allows you to see exactly how your material reacts in different types of configurations. But generally, we're running out of time, so I want to get this rendering as soon as possible. You might notice we've added a few extra assets in here off camera, 
And what we need to do now is look at some different rendering solutions. So V-Ray comes with quite a few. Um, we have uh, Progressive, which is what we'll set up here, but we'll just tweak the render output, um, add in the depth of field, which works in a similar kind of way to Enscape, where you choose the focal point. Um, everything sort of before and after that is going to be defocused somewhat. And generally, it's good practice at lower resolution to also add a denoiser, which again, you can see here, we've got the NVIDIA AI denoiser added. Once we're happy, we can then go ahead and choose the render button here, which is the render with V-Ray kettle, the famous kettle, and we'll see the frame buffer pop up once more. So as a progressive render what's going to happen here is it's going to start off really noisy it, it will resolve the light cache first where it calculates the majority of the light bounces then it's going to end up with a image which is ultimately really quite noisy to begin with here we can see that this image is really really bright so there's something going wrong with it right now but within the light mix this is somewhere we can address this so if any of our lights are too bright or not bright enough what we can do is turn off some of these lights almost like after it's rendered. So this is a post-processing technique. I've got loads of um, color corrections which I added uh, before, so I'll, I've turned those off. But now we can see this is the original render and then a really quick uh, play with the light mix allows you to see how you can turn these lights off as a post-processing effect. So looking out the window there, you can see we've got our horse off in the distance, looking very majestic. Um, but now we're going to review this once more. So we've turned our color clamping back on again. And you'll see on the bed, we've got that light blue color clamp. Those false colors are slowly being removed, um, which is good. We don't want too much of that within our scene. Um, we've got a good amount of detail developing here and that wood texture is looking really nice on the floor. Got our friend over there just outside the uh, the windows. Um, but generally, this is a um, a great way using this light mix to tweak some of the, uh, the appearances of the lights within your scenes. So what happens is an individual image uh, of your scene gets rendered out with each light turned on. So it's almost like you'd have one where it's just the sunlight is bouncing around our model. Another one where it's just the pendants bounce the, the lights from the pendant bouncing around our model that what that then allows you to do is it recompiles them into the light mix so you can start adjusting the intensity of each of those lights and the colors of them as well so this is why we reverted all of those other lights when we were testing them before back to white so here I'm just messing around with some more of the settings where you can see Pendant 1609 is actually a light that was brought in from the Chaos Cosmos. So we didn't actually need to add an Omni light in that instance. Something else that it's always good practice to do here, much like you do in Enscape, is to adjust some of the lens effects settings. But you've got a little bit more control within V-Ray where you can adjust things like scratches or dust as well, which will give a different appearance to your image. So this is the kind of look I'm going for, you know, a little bit bloomy, um, some glare in there as well to create that otherworldly type of effect. So what I'm doing is just zooming in on certain areas of the of the image just to double check the quality is as I'd expect. But generally within the frame buffer, this is where we would go ahead and make the majority of our post-production edits. We don't actually make many edits at all really in a post-production software, external post-production software, because you can do so much within the frame buffer. So like adding curves, um, you know, play around with the lightness and the darkness, add a bit of temperature to your model, uh, sorry, to your image as well. Um, some of you might even use some of this magenta and green tint to create a little bit more of a stylistic feel to your, to your image. I quite like to pull the magenta down ever so slight up, sorry, ever so slightly so that it's uh, um, it gets that kind of magenta feel to it. But yeah, overall, um, there's lots and lots of functionality within this frame buffer, within V-Ray in general, to be able to convert the image that we had within Enscape into a V-Ray scene. 
um, all of the vegetation outside is that that's still Enscape. I haven't replaced that with V-Ray assets yet. And out to the distance, it looks absolutely fine. There are other assets available on Chaos Cosmos, as you'd imagine. So you could always apply that same approach where you're swapping out any assets you've got from Enscape, legacy assets from Enscape. You could replace them with higher quality Cosmos assets. But generally, you can see six, nearly seven minutes, um, it's rendered off this image at 1920 by 1080. And now what we'll do is have a little bit of a before and after and compare the Enscape image with the V-Ray image using the history. Cool. So expanding the sidebar, we can add any of the images that are loaded into our frame buffer to our history and compare them. This is one of the features that I love, especially if you're doing before and after, you know, with a bit of design development. Um, and then you've got this nice slider where you can see the Enscape and uh, the V-Ray when we pull it over. So generally, this is how we would go about creating a V-Ray image from an Enscape scene. Now, obviously, it's you know incredibly <laughs> quick, but this is the general outline. Um, like I said, we've got the complete guide. It's self-paced, pre-recorded. Um, a complete guide to V-Ray for SketchUp, and that goes into much more detail. So yeah, this is the approach that we would take to convert an Enscape image into a V-Ray image. And yeah, as you'd expect, this we've absolutely flown through this. So uh, there's gonna be things in here which we haven't covered in a huge amount of detail. Um, we'll set up a before and after here so that we can see uh, exactly how this looks in comparison to the Enscape scene. But generally, this is a bit of an outline of the process we'd go through to convert an Enscape scene to a V-Ray image. Now, obviously, um, on the complete guide to V-Ray for SketchUp, it goes into much, much more detail. There's over 45 lessons covering you know, everything there is to know about V-Ray. So with it all being self-paced, you guys are more than welcome to use that discount code to, uh, to take advantage of that if you want to start converting your Enscape scenes into professional production CGI's. So um, yeah, let me know in the chat if any of you users are keen to understand V-Ray more detail or just head over to the uh, link using the QR code I've put in the corner. I'd just like to say a big thank you for um, joining us today. It's, um, it's hopefully been interesting uh, to you V-Ray users that have learned a little bit about Enscape and, and how it works. And likewise, you Enscape users that have a bit of an insight now into our V-Ray workflow. Now, if any of you have any questions, um, like I said, please put them in the chat or feel free to contact me through our website um, you know, using that QR code. Don't forget to use the coupon code Enscape20 to get 20% off this complete guide to V-Ray for SketchUp. And yeah, have a great day, everyone, and happy rendering. So Gemma, I'll hand it back over to you now. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Dan. That was amazing. It's uh, really interesting to see how you can take an Enscape visual and just add those finer details in V-Ray for an even more photorealistic result. So thank you so much for walking us through that. Now, I know that was a lot to go through, but we did record the webinar. And of course, we will send that to you um, shortly via email. We'll also be sure to include a few useful links as well um, to things such as our, our system requirements um, and a few other resources as well. Um, we'll also get back to you with any questions that you submitted during the webinar. Um, so be on the lookout for an email from us um, if you did submit a question. So that's it for today. Um, thanks again to our presenters, to Dan Monaghan and Dan Stone um, for sharing their presentations with us today, sharing the demo. Um, and thank you also for taking the time out of your day to join us. We really do appreciate that. And we hope you enjoyed the session. We, we had a lot of fun putting it together and a lot of work went into this so that we, we, we do hope that you got something out of today. Um, so with that, I wish you a great rest of your day and we hope to see you on another webinar soon. Thanks very much, everyone.